That's just a bit of the latest video by Matthew Good, his song entitled In a World Called Catastrophe. Some very overt political images uh, in that song and in that video, as you can see. Matthew Good is known as a very, <clears throat> shall we say, outspoken member of Canada's music community, outspoken about the industry, outspoken about politics. This weekend here in Ottawa, his song Weapon won a Juno for Best Video of the Year, and Matthew Good joins me in the studio. Thanks for coming in. Hey, man, it's always my pleasure. We're not going to talk about music, we're going to talk about politics. We okay? are going to talk about politics. That's why the show is called Let's... Talk Politics, not called Talk Music. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you, uh, you have some, you follow uh, politics very closely, mm -hmm. I know, and I I've been curious ever since all of this business with Iraq started, uh, just exactly how you felt about what was what was transpiring. Well, I think that this has been the mandate of Paul Wolfowitz and Donald Rumsfeld and Heather Pearl and others for a long, long time. I think it's Pax Americana. Um, uh, there is no justification for the United States to be in Iraq right now. I think that's very self-evident. I don't think you can use the human rights violations issue ten years later that's stale because that doesn't justify them not going into Sierra Leone or a number of other countries in the past. They gassed the Kurds in 88 and of course it was you know, then the position of the White House to not get involved. I just love watching CNN, for example, and Donald Rumsfeld talk about how evil Saddam Hussein was and wasn't it him that gave him golden spurs in 1983 when they had tea and cakes? You know, it, it's just ridiculous. It's, I just cannot believe that, um, I mean, first of all, it's you know, very unfortunate they acted unilaterally and basically usurped the United Nations. Mm -hmm. I mean, that to me is the, is the largest, um, you know, is the largest thing that I can't get Do over. Do you think that, the, that they will pay a price uh, if, as it's playing out right now, as you and I sit here now, uh, they are in Baghdad to a degree. There's mm -hmm. fighting going on in the streets of Baghdad. They've mm -hmm. taken the airport, though the information minister in the, uh, the Saddam government says, I can't see any Americans, but evidently they're right across the street. Exactly. Uh, nonetheless, they have yet to find any weapons of mass destruction. This is not to say that they won't, but up to now, mm -hmm. getting as close as they have, they haven't found much. They, they're looking at some, some canisters that they found somewhere, but it, it, even if it is, it's not going to be a whole lot of anything. It looks Wasn't like it reported today that uh, American troops no longer had to worry about wearing protective yeah, or some, carrying protective yes. gear in case of chemical or bomb? That was, so yeah. that was one of the reports that came out today. Yeah. If they get through all of this and there, and there ends up not to be any of those things mm -hmm. there, that was basically the linchpin for the legal argument that the British and the Americans used to mm -hmm. carry out this action. Mm -hmm. What do you think was going to happen domestically in both those countries? In the United States, very little. Um, I think because you know how it's just kind of embedded in, 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 in the DNA of, of, of the U.S. people. I mean, the Americans, once they go to war, their mind frame changes in, in the beginning. And it takes a very long period of time for their mind to change. I mean, Vietnam, it took till well after Tet for people to start to go, well, hold on here. Uh, you know, obviously this isn't, this isn't, you know, going the way we thought it would. This isn't as easy as we thought it was going to be and there are consequences and the rest of it. But I think that, um, I think that uh, a victory in Iraq and uh, a positioning of, of them firmly in the Middle East and given what happened with uh, September 11th and the vilification of Arab people in general, I don't really think that a lot's going to happen. You don't think there's a big enough movement, anti-war movement in the United States that would mobilize enough, and that was the word that was used during Vietnam too, mobilize enough to, to start swaying public opinion against the actions of the administration of George W. Bush? Had Vietnam ended, ended in 1967, I don't think there would have been the political action that there was. You know, things obviously went extremely awry in, 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 in the late 60s and early 70s, obviously leading to more and more and more and more action socially. Um, I don't really think that that's going to be the case because obviously they're going to topple. I mean, it, that that particular time in U.S. history is a lot different because they didn't have, you know, that one act that fueled people's rage. You know, the right is extremely pissed off about this because they have one day in 2001 where they can go, well, look, this is what happens. You know, this this is, I mean, mm -hmm. despite the fact that what the U.S. is doing right now is going to probably create a thousand more mm -hmm. of those exact same people, galvanize, uh, you know, Arab opinion against the United States and the Middle East and... Uh, my, my big problem with it, too, is, is how do you force freedom upon people? You know, your version of freedom, even worse, you know. Um, there has been some uh, suggestion in the last little while as the discussion now starts to turn to the so-called reconstruction of Iraq mm -hmm. and what's going to transpire later. And I did see a comment on 60 Minutes, in fact, this past weekend from an official who's in, who will be involved in the American end of that reconstruction saying, 
uh, well, they, they would expect to have democracy uh, in place for two years and frankly couldn't figure out why it would take that long. It's not, uh, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed to me that there's kind of a lack of understanding that in some parts of the world where, where democracy has been in absentia for yeah. ever, yeah. Uh, it's not something that just happens overnight. It's something that has to be learned. Yeah, well, I mean, that country is so politically or, or, or tribally fractured, too. I mean, that, 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 that is going to be the their first contention after they get all of this cleaned up. You know, I think that you're going to find that uh, that the United States is going to handle it very much as they did Japan after the Second World War. That they're going to kind of uh, put a government in that's friendly to their, uh, you know, e economic needs and and, mm -hmm. and wants and desires. Um, and it's a great basis to influence the modern democratic movement in Iran. You know, it, it's a great it's a great uh, stepping stone for the unfreezing process. You know, once you're in the region, and hopefully you can change some mind, win some hearts, and you know, and the rest of it. Will that happen? You know, I highly, highly, highly doubt it. You know, and uh, will the Iraqi people buy it? I mean, I think they're really right now they're faced with what the Russians were faced with after after the end of the Cold War. You know, this great idea of freedom, um, and, and uh, you know, the end of end of sanctions, uh, a better economy, uh, you know, a brighter day to look forward to, and they're all going to end up working at McDonald's, yes, and the so black market's going to reign yeah. supreme. And, and, the yeah, and it doesn't happen know. that quickly, and then they start looking for the longingly at the old days, as has right. happened in the, in the former right. Soviet Union. That's right. I mean, I, the, the interesting thing about it, given that it's only really been a year and a half, I think we won't, the, all you have to really do is look at what's going on in Afghanistan right now mm -hmm. as a justification of what may happen in Iraq. Which nothing is, what, is, which is actually what we're going to do in the show tomorrow with somebody who spent some time there. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's nothing pretty, pretty is much gone. Been, right. Yeah, forget about it. You know, it's it, it's kind of ironic. It's like twice in 20 years, <laughs> you know, that they've been there and, and, and nothing's changed. So, tell me what you think about what's what's happened in Canada over all of this. And first of all, tell me, give me your 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 impressions of uh, of what went on before the prime minister stood up in the House of Commons and made that unequivocal statement that he made. The, mm -hmm. the, what many people saw as the backing, throwing, the toing and froing on it. And then, what do you think once he made that decision onwards? Well, first of all, I think that it was fantastic that he did. Prior to that, I was, I, I was worried that, that obviously that uh, um, that the government would support them because it's it's it obviously it's a slippery slope given that we have uh, we have ships there you know in the war on terrorism and we're involved in Afghanistan and and that you know, obviously the government would be a little concerned about obviously burning bridges. Mm -hmm. um, it was nice to see that they uh, that they didn't, and it was kind of a testament to a time that he'd spent under another man. Yeah. Some some time ago. Now there is there has been criticism from from both camps on this one of that stand. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, you have the Canadian Alliance saying, "Well, listen, uh, you know, we've actually got people there, and we've taken this ridiculous stand. We think we should be behind our neighbors, and if we've already got people there, why aren't we?" Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, we have the people, the NDP, and, and other groups now who are critical of the government having people over there while taking a stand saying we're not going to be backing this without UN sanctions. Yeah. Both sides basically suggesting that the government's being uh, hypocritical and duplicitous. But that, that's, that's Canadian politics though. I mean, if you even look at it, I mean, it's, it's, hey, I'm from British Columbia. I mean, look at provincial politics in British Columbia. It's not even about running a province. It's about finding out somebody's, dir other, you know, somebody's dirty laundry so you can pin them in the Vancouver sun on it, you know? I mean, it, 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 it never stops. When a Stockwell Day stands up in the house and, and, and yammers on, I give, you know, what are you going to listen to those guys are the new Socrats, you know what I mean? It's big business to them. It's all money. Um, all you have to do is look at the statement sent to, uh, um, to the American ambassador from people like Sir Ralph Klein and, uh, and the, the, the Premier of Ontario. I mean, to me, I remember, I remember when that happened, especially when uh, the second letter was sent, and I thought to myself, this is, this is like a mild coup. You know what I mean? It, it's just, you've just completely usurped Canadian foreign policy. Like, why would you do that? You know? Um, it, it blew my mind that it happened. Um, it just would be nice for once in this country for everyone to stand behind. You know, it, it, it's, a very, it's very demonstrative of, of our, our national inferiority complex. That any time the United States comes into a you know, decision-making process that we have to politically make on a federal level, you know, mm. everyone runs in three different directions because now, no one else has to do. Speaking of that, do you think that we have, as many people suggest, that we have really um, uh, queered the relationship with the United States, at least in the short term, from pers because of some of the things that have been said up here, some of the uh, ext extemporaneous comments that have come from some politicians? Mm. You know, I, the United States.